this is my testimony about meeting Jesus Christ in person. I mean, truly meeting him. Not just when I close my eyes, not just when I'm praying or with my imagination, but in reality, I have seen and met the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahshua Hamachia. Now, this is my testimony. This is my story. And since that day that I've seen him, I, I haven't been perfect. I still fell in sin. I still made many mistakes. I can't, I can't believe that I had the honor and the privilege of seeing the Lord, but still falling short. But I guess it's, we're in a constant battle. But seeing him is engraved in my spirit and I cannot deny that he exists and that he is God. So here is my testimony. So I had a, a horrible ectopic miscarriage where the baby, instead of the baby growing in your uterus, it grows in your fallopian tube. And I didn't know that the, the baby was growing in my fallopian tube. The doctor didn't notice it. And it, I was two months, two months pregnant. And eventually what happens is that it ruptures. But the baby was alive. It still was attached and it still was feeding itself. And everything was normal with the baby until there wasn't any more space in my fallopian tube for it to continue growing. So the fallopian tube explodes and the baby dies. And uh, so I fainted when that happened and the ambulance came to, to get me, brought me to the hospital. And I went into a spiritual battle when I reached the hospital because nobody was helping me. They left me in the emergency room screaming for four hours. And uh, I was screaming, Jesus, 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 help me. I don't want my baby to die. Jesus, Jesus, come, please, please, Jesus. And it seemed like while I was suffering and screaming, Jesus, what I felt was that in the emergency room, there was people that were praying for me and that were touched and, and even saddened by what was happening to me. And others were annoyed by hearing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And there was even a nurse, a male nurse that was homosexual. And he was really annoyed by me screaming Jesus, Jesus for like four hours. And when I would faint and come back and start saying, ow, ow, this hurts, he'd say, oh, look at her. She remembers that it hurts. And he would make all these really cruel comments. And that's when I realized that some people in this emergency room were with God and some others were with the devil. And the ones that were with the devil were wishing for my death for me just to shut up and stop screaming, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It was surreal. Anyways, to make a really long story short, at one point, one of a nurse, a male nurse, Asian male nurse, passed by and says, what is she still doing here? It's been like too long that she's screaming and in agony. And I heard them say they're, that she's not bleeding and so she they're waiting for her to bleed or so. So I put my hand in, in between my legs and I looked for blood and there was blood and I was like, I showed them my hand. And then they brought me to the second floor and left me in this room. Uh, they, oh yeah, they, they passed an echo, echo, uh, when they can see inside and with this, this, anyways, there was blood at, at everywhere, so they left the room really quickly to go get a, a mask to put on my face, and I could feel that I was dying, like I really felt. And when you're dying, you can taste it. 
it tasted like that. It smelled and I felt like life was leaving my body. And I was ready to die. Like I was like, okay, this is it. I'm dying. Like I was ready to die. And they left. Everybody left to get, I think, uh, something for me to breed. And they didn't give me any drugs. Like this really happened on its own. And as they left for the room, they might have left one minute or two. But during that one or two minute, this is what happened. I was laying down. And in the corner of the, the room, something appeared and it was made out of thunder. It was made out of fire. It was like the biggest light emanating from this really tall being, like seven foot or six foot four. I don't know, really tall, slender, thunder-like being. I couldn't see his face, I couldn't see, but I could see there was two arms, two legs. It was a head. And it was coming towards me and all around his body was this gas. You know, like when you're driving and and it's in the desert or something and there's gas on the road in the, like a mirage. That's what was surrounding him. Gas, like mirage gas all around. And inside it was like the light was so powerful it was like bluish white neon thunder fiery light oh it was just i i was so scared it was and the first thing i i said when i saw this is oh my god these things really do exist oh my god this really exists and i was like oh no i don't want to see this oh I don't, I just wanted it to go away. I was like, no, no, please just go away. I was like, oh, I'm not ready for this. I don't want to see this. And then I had to just surrender and I, cause I couldn't move. I couldn't, I couldn't leave the bed. And I felt like throwing myself on the ground. I felt like my face was supposed to be on the ground because this was royalty. It was just like, the royalty was beyond royalty. It was just, and it had like the might of a lion. It was just like really severe, really powerful presence. And as it was coming towards me slowly, I could also feel it had the love and the, the gentleness of a dove or a, a kitten. You know, it was like a lion with the heart of a kitten. Like, I felt it had the power to take my life, and it had the power to heal me. It had, it had everything. It was everything. It was severe, like, like, you know, like you love your, your parents, but they can be severe. And anyways, it, it was God. It was Jesus Christ. And it floated kind of like towards me gently or walked towards me gently. And it put its hand on my left foot. And when it, when the hand reached my left foot, I felt like a river of water coming through me, like fresh water coming through me, through my foot and all through my whole body, washing me. And it, I could hear the river or the, like a, a fountain or something like come through my entire body. And then it left. It left just like you close a television. And I couldn't believe that Christ took the time to come see me, you know, and I felt like I, I didn't deserve this and. I was like so honored that he took the time to come see me, you know, because I called for four hours. I called him and I called him and out of the entire universe, he heard my call and he came. So anyways, that's like, that's how much God loves us. Like we're like specks of sands and on the planet we're just like sand you know little specks of sand all throughout the 
planet, but God hears us. So that's it. That's 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 the love of God for even a sinner like me. He came and he took the time to come see me. And then I survived this. And uh, the doctor said, four more minutes and you were dead. Because right after this happened, the nurses and everybody came and took me to the operating room. So this only lasted about a minute or two, probably just a minute. And I survived this. And But then I was so enraged that I didn't die because I wanted to be with Jesus Christ. I wanted, I didn't want to continue being here. I just wanted to be with the Lord. And I was like, why did you save me? I, I just wanted to be with you. But I guess I had to stay. I had to come back. I had to, to come back to testify and talk about him. But even after that, I fell into the kemetic path, into Egyptology, and I felt into I fell into like these different paths, and I didn't understand. I still didn't understand who was Jesus Christ. I still didn't understand. And then I had to fall really deep into depression and sin, and to come back and to call him and then when I called him again then I really really this time I really know that he's the only way because I could feel the breath of life come back into me life came back into me love hope everything came back into me when I came back to Jesus Christ and I understood that he's the only way and it has nothing to do with race color you know, because it was like a, a racial demon that had me. Because the Rome, what, what, what the Roman Catholic Church did to the slaves and to the natives. And I really do, I'm really in disagreement with the Roman Catholic Church. But I understand that being a disciple of Jesus Christ has nothing to do with what they did. And that's the devil that used the message of Jesus Christ to taint it and to make people turn away, especially the African Americans and the natives. So anyways, now I understand who Jesus Christ is and it has nothing to do with all of that. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ and I'm following Jesus Christ and his message and his ways. And there is salvation in following him and he is the only way and once once you accept that and you understand that and that you read the new testament and you start to grasp all this then you understand that it has nothing to do with race it's a message about spirit it's a message and it makes you see who the devil is and it makes you see it's like you get a special vision about life so blessings to anyone that listened to this message and if you want just accept jesus christ right now with me say jesus christ i accept you as my savior and just start to read the new testament slowly a few pages every day and you'll grasp slowly the message and you'll understand that it's only in the name of Jesus Christ that you can bind the devil. It's only in the name of Jesus Christ that you can cast out demons. You can't do it with the Kemetic gods. You can't do it with shamanism. You can't do it with Krishna or Buddha or Allah or any other. And it's not to to diss these people that are in different paths. It's just that this is Jesus Christ's department. This is a specialty. If you accept him, then you can trample the demons. You can cast them out and you have authority over the devil. So use Jesus Christ in your life to have authority over the devil and to become stronger and to become wiser and, and just to have the, 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 the eyes that it takes to see evil and to get out of the matrix and to become part of a new government 
to be to have Jesus Christ as a king, as a prime minister, as as a president, is to become part of a new type of society and to see things for what they are. And it's really cool. It's really great. It's amazing. And to respect yourself and your sexuality and to respect others. Because I don't ever feel like forcing anyone into believing in Jesus Christ. So I don't understand where did that come from to force people into it. No, you just come to it with your heart. It has nothing to do with judging and, and desecrating other people's paths or ways. No, when you come to Jesus, you come to him with your heart. Because you decided to come to him because it's irresistible and it's beautiful. So blessings to all of you that listen to my testimony. And I really hope that you take a chance and pray to Jesus and seek him and talk to him if you don't feel good or if you're wanting for answer or if you want to have a personal relationship with God where he follows you and is living within you 24-7. Call on Jesus Christ. Read the Bible. And uh, Chris Lasala is a good person to... I mean, he's not perfect, but he has really good teachings. Him and his wife, Sharda Lasala, look him up. Wow, I've learned so much from Chris Lasala and Sharda Lasala. Like, really, this is a great way to to understand and walk with, with Christ. Or Precious Testimonies and the OTC channel. And uh, just the last messages and Angel of Apocalypse. Those things, like, keep you updated with what's going on in these times of revelations. So I wish you the best and I, I may God bless you and may God really truly open your eyes and come into your heart. Be blessed.